I'm in a pretty great relationship, and we're supposed to get married, but now I'm not really sure. You are listening to the Dare to Love podcast with your hosts, Sonica Tinker and Christian Peterson, founders of LoveWorks. Welcome to the podcast. This is Christian Peterson, and I'll be your host today. We received this very important question from a listener, and our listener went on to add, I'm in a great relationship. We've been in a relationship for many years, and things are pretty good. It's not perfect, though, because I feel that our passion is lacking and that we don't communicate as deeply as I want us to. We do function together really well, but it's like the fire is not burning so much. And that makes me doubt about whether we should get married. So how do we balance this doubt with commitment? Like, how can I know if and when it's the right time and the right choice to commit and to marry someone despite these lingering doubts? That's a really good question. And I want to say first, we got this question from a listener in uh, who's asking it in the light of should we get married or not? But we get this very same question from couples who have been married five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years even. They typically ask it in the light of should I remain in this marriage or not? But it's the same essence of it. It's not as passionate and as deep as I would like it to be. What do I do? I have doubts about whether I should continue, whether I should commit, or in some cases, recommit. How do I deal with that? Now, Sonic and I have saved many marriages from divorce, and sometimes we even save marriages before the marriage has happened. I remember we once had a young couple who came to us. They had actually already scheduled their wedding. It was four weeks it was supposed excuse me it was supposed to be happening in 4 months and they were expressing similar doubts to our listener here and were like you know they were actually going to call off their wedding and they came and talked to us and we did a little bit of coaching with them first and then they came and did some of our workshops and they absolutely reignited and took care of all the things they had doubts about and they got married some this was 3 or 4 maybe 5 years ago and they're still married and they have children and are loving it We can't know, of course, what's going to happen in your particular relationship, but we definitely have some useful things to share with you here. And I want to acknowledge when you're looking at tying the knot, it can be really heart-wrenching to have these doubts because, of course, you want to make the right decision and no one wants to go into a marriage that might not work out and that you might regret later. We really respect that and we really want to help. As relationship coaches, Sonica and I never tell anyone that they should or shouldn't get married or should or shouldn't get divorced for that matter. There are definitely relationship coaches and counselors out there who will dispense such advice, but we feel it's much too important a decision for us to make it on your behalf. It's a decision that has to be sourced from inside of you, has to be made with your heart behind your decision. So we instead use our coaching and expertise to empower you to make that choice. And besides, if someone else makes the choice for you or heavily influences the choice, it's very likely you'll still have the doubts. So here today on this short episode, let's see if I can offer some tips that will help you get more clear about this. When you ask this question, I'm going to assume that you actually genuinely love each other. Because I figured that if you didn't, we wouldn't even have this conversation. You wouldn't even be asking the question and you would have just left the relationship already. In this situation, there are things you can do together with your partner and there are things you can do by yourself. Let's start with what you can do with your partner. When one person has doubts about a relationship, in this case, whether to get married, it often looks as if it's only that person that has doubts and the other partner is like totally committed and ready to move forward. But that's deceiving because in our experience, each person owns a share of the doubt as well as a share of the commitment. It's just that the doubt gets expressed through one person on behalf of the entire relationship. So it's like that one person is speaking for the relationship. Now, what you can do is you can sit down with your partner and both of you answer these questions. What part of you is fully committed and what part of you is not sure? Both of you look at where you have doubts, even if up till this point it has seemed as if it's just one person expressing the doubts. And both of you look at where you are committed. And you'll very often find that you're much more on the same page than you think. 
the very act of sharing your doubts openly with each other will help you to create connection and more clarity. And besides, isn't that what you're wanting in a marriage anyway? A place where you can share everything, even the difficult parts. So part of creating connection and clarity is don't wait till you're married. You start that right now. Like this is it. Whether you get married or not, you're still in this relationship. And as long as you are, you might as well give it all you got and be in the relationship in the way you want the relationship to be. So start having this conversation right now. If you need facilitation to have a conversation like this, that's perfectly okay. You're not the only one. That's, it's just perfectly okay and perfectly normal. Reach out to us for coaching or ask someone else you trust to help facilitate this conversation. And when the issue is, as our listener said here, that communication isn't very deep and the fire isn't burning as hot as, as is desired, that can be worked on. You know, when those are the reasons why you have doubts, that can be remedied, that can be changed. As an example, we just led our sex workshop last month and there was a couple there who hadn't been sexual at all for several years. So you could say from their point of view, the passion had all but died and disappeared altogether. After the first day, just one day of this workshop, they went back to their hotel room and they made wonderful love and connected at a whole new level. And one of them shared with us afterwards, I quote here, thank you for an amazing workshop. I feel like I'm walking on air, not just because of the sex, but from the breakthrough in our relationship, we had an epiphany about why sex is so important to us, which is where we've been stuck and not communicating. The closeness and intimacy generated in the workshop led us to discussing new things uh, that influenced the dynamic in our relationship overall, end quote. So in this case, both, you know, both the sex and the communication got deepened. And it's just one example that we have seen over and over and over again. Putting yourself in a space like this can do amazing things for the depth of of your communication and the depth of your sex intimacy and that fire that burns inside. So communicating at a deep intimate level can absolutely be learned. And starting with what I just suggested, sitting down for a talk like this is a great way to start communicating right now at a much deeper level. Now for what you might do on your own part or do by yourself, first you could do what I've already suggested, simply do it by yourself. You write down or at least you think about where you have doubts and where you are committed. And just looking at those will sometimes create clarity for you. Secondly, given that you're reaching for clarity and I assume commitment as well, notice that in your very questioning is a good deal of your own non-commitment. The question you ask are questions asked by someone who is not committed in themselves. And it's just, it's painful to live with doubts in your mind. It's kind of, you know, it's like sitting on the proverbial fence. It starts to hurt your butt pretty quickly. <laughs> Sorry for the crude uh, metaphor here, but except in this case, it's in your head and at heart that it hurts. So try to think of commitment a little bit differently. Instead of committing to someone else or to the institution of marriage, think of commitment as a declaration that you are committing to yourself, that you will be able to handle anything that shows up, that you will make good on anything that comes your way. The doubt in your mind reflects a fear that you won't be able to handle what might show up in the future, that you'll regret your choices. What if your commitment was a commitment to yourself that you trust you'll be able to deal with anything, even if, say, five or ten years down the road, new doubts present themselves or communication troubles present themselves or like the couple I referenced from who came to our workshop that hadn't had sex for many, many years. You know, you could end up in that situation, but that you are committed to that you will be able to deal with that. And most of all, here's what I suggest you try on. Commit fully. You step in with both feet and your whole heart. It's in throwing yourself fully into the relationship that you'll have the best chance of discovering if it's the right relationship for you. You already said it's a great relationship, so we know some things are working well. We know you must like and love each other, or you would have probably just been out of there a long time ago. When you're plagued by doubts, you're, you're not fully engaged yourself in your relationship. 
you're not fully engaged with your partner. And that impacts everything. That by itself makes the relationship less alive and passionate. Doubts make you less passionate. So jump in with everything you've got. You could even postpone the wedding date if you need more time to test this out. There's no rule for when you should get married. I know a lot of people will ask us that. When should we? We've been, to go, we've been going out or we've been living together for so and so long. When's the time you should get married? As far as we're concerned, there is no rule. We're all different about that. So I'd suggest you give it a try to get, strike the try part. You just give it everything you got. You can come do workshops with us to deepen your communication and elevate your passion. Or you can find another class or another coach to figure this out. That's totally fine too. What you learn will serve you forever. Even if you decide down the road that this relationship is not for you, the skills you learned will make your next relationship so much better. And by you putting yourself in all the way, even if you decide later this relationship is not for you, you'll know that you gave it all you had. That it wasn't because you didn't put your heart into it. And that in itself brings its own sense of clarity. More likely, though, if you commit yourself, if you do what you need to do to learn deeper skills of communication and how to fire up the passion, you'll find all the love and clarity you're looking for. So those are my suggestions to take on for starters here. We hope that was useful for many of you and feel free to send us more of your questions either on Facebook, on our Facebook page is Loveworks for You or via our website, loveworksforyou.com. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time. You have been listening to the Dare to Love podcast with your hosts, Sonica Tinker and Christian Peterson, founders of Loveworks. And hey, if you found this podcast to be useful, would you go ahead and hit the share button and share this with your friends on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or wherever your favorite hangouts are. Thanks so much for sharing the love. And you can find more about our work at loveworksforyou.com. Thank you.